This is my fat ass fleeing America. Let's fast forward about two months to when I land in Albania. Welcome to Not Dead Yet Adventures. Hopefully it stays that way. I'm out here sweating like a son of a, and uh, struggling. My legs are burning, my knees hurting, my feet hurt. But today is the day. January. I've been on the road six months. I'm here, uh, it's a Baltic Sea. I'm not dead yet. Another day to walk around, see what's going on. So I'm still here on the Baltic coast of Poland. It's a lot colder than I expected and I'd made it out before sunrise. So big plus there. Getting a few steps in, getting the grind on a little bit. Uh, I wanted to talk this morning about how I started really getting healthy. So, as you know, or may not know, you know, I sold everything I had, left California, and I've been nomadic for six months. Um, so the first two months I was in the Azores, and. And that time was really spent just getting used to the idea of being nomadic. And, uh, you know, it's a lot more lonely than I think people uh, understand. You know, even for a somewhat isolated person like me in California, you know, I didn't have those daily uh, interactions. So I had to go develop those again and learn how to, how to fight the loneliness on the road. So. Spent a good two months getting adjusted to that. Uh, went on a side trip, you know, and that really kind of focused a lot of my energy. And I did a lot of reading when I was in Azores too. Um, a lot of studying. So anyway, I got to Albania and my big goal in Albania was to get on the road every day and walk. I didn't walk every day I was there, but I walked most, like you had to walk you know, farther than most Americans every day just to survive, like just to go to the store, get coffee or whatever. You know, it's not walk out the door, jump in your car, go to the store. You know, it's you walk to the store. So there's a little bit of exercise there, but what I mean walk, I mean like a dedicated, fast-paced walk uh, and work the grind. And I'd also want to work my diet. You know, I've been doing a lot of research on a bunch of crazy things, so I wanted to work my diet a lot more, and I did that. Um, taking a little walk through the trees here this morning. I'm gonna turn around, hit the beach, and go the other way. But uh, just beautiful. Like, I stop and, you know. Anyway, so, you know, walking every day, work the diet. I set up a, a goal. I don't think I ever met my goal of you know, more than a week in a row. I wanted to walk a long route three days a week and a short route two days a week and work on different things in my walking. So one thing I noticed is my stride got really short and slow. So, and my posture, you know, a lot of people talk about the sea human, you know, constantly doing more and more of this, you know, hunching over. Um, so two days of the week, you know, my goal was to walk a pretty flat, uh, you know, stable ground surface and, you know, walk more erect and, and get used to the idea of sitting more erect and just being more upright and not, you know, hunched over looking at the ground. Um, you know, when you're backpacking, I noticed you, know, you get that forward lean and the lean turns into a, a curl instead of just a should you know, a more, a better way to do it would be just to lean like this, but you know, inevitably you get more of this curl going, uh, and that curl's bad, right? So, 
So that was my goal, two days a week, work on that specifically and, and work on my stride. As I say it, I pick up my stride. Cause that, you know, we naturally just want to slow down, right? So uh, working on my stride was very nice because it really got me, uh, it's frustrating sometimes you know, walking with a lot of people, but it really stretched out my stride a lot and quickened it. Uh, you know, the other days it was more about you know, just get her done, right? Just get some cardio in and get some miles on on the shoes. Um, but then the diet, you know, the diet, I've been thinking a lot about how I wanted to relay this because, you know, I am the epitome of what not to do when it comes to health. You know, I'm not the guy to give health advice. Uh, and I'm not going to give advice here. I may say, you know, try this or try that. But that's for you to experiment with, right? Um, so I was listening to all these people and there's all these crazy guys out there, you know, V Shred, Grundy, um, you know, there's a ton of guys out there talking about diet and how to lose weight and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I would suggest if you want to live, go learn because what we learned in school 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, and what kids are learning in school now about diet and nutrition is seems to be, you know, pretty inaccurate. It seems there's a lot more um, current, verifiable knowledge out there than what is really being taught in schools. And I mean, even doctors, you know, I spoke to a couple of doctors about it, I spoke to, you know, the VA was supposed to hook me up with this nutritionist and her idea of being effective was sending me a scale and having me weigh myself every day and sending me little notes like carbs are bad. Like, I don't need somebody texting me carbs are bad, right? I mean, that's just infantilism, right? And, you know, what good are you? You know, I needed a nutrition to help, nutritionist to help me formulate a diet that was feasible and realistically manageable. You know, some of these guys online, oh wow, this is just, I wonder if you can pick up that pink. It's just beautiful, a little more of it over here. So some of these guys online, you know, there's this one guy, you know, he's taking this olive oil that's like special hand press, special breeds, and then you know, those cantaloupes that Jennifer Aniston was hawking with the, you know, facial cream. You know, and it's just unrealistic uh, for somebody on a budget to be doing a lot of this stuff. And, and even like, you know, going organic, at the time I felt it was really unrealistic. You know, now that I've changed my, my diet and stuff, I could easily go organic, 100% organic in America and not go broke. Um, well, maybe, I'm not sure now with inflation, because I haven't been there, but pre-inflation, I could do it and not go broke because I've changed the way I eat, right? Um, I remember changing my diet and my eating habits is really what helped fund my transition out of America, right? So, you know, listening to all these people, there was one guy, he talked about the gut. You know, a lot of these people, you know, when you dive deep, they talk about like all the microbes in your gut, all this, and I'm gonna bastardize it and screw it up. But basically, I was listening to one guy and this kind of rung, rang true with me. He was talking about how you have all these little bacterium in your gut and you know, some are based off sugar, some are based off this, and you know, I notice this when I cut sugar. I cut sugar like for two months, about a year ago, and really just went crazy. Like I thought I was, like I literally thought I was going crazy, um, crazier. You know, I even like sought out a neurologist about it because you know, it felt like I was on crack. I was getting these like manic episodes. When I say cut sugar, like, you know, I went from drinking a couple cases of Coke a month. You know, I was the guy I'd go to Costco, get a 
couple handles of, every month, you know, get paid, go to Costco, get a couple handles of, of whiskey, a couple cases of Coke, and probably buy another one, you know, before the end of the month. Uh, so, and not, like I can trace my sugar addiction back to, you know, childhood. It's, you know, all the fresh fruit and stuff. So when I say I cut sugar, like I cut fruit, I even was cutting white bread the last month, like all white uh, flour and things like that, things that turn straight into sugar in your system. So I was getting these manic episodes, right? So this guy is going on about these bacterium and how when you eat something in the morning, you know, and he was talking about fasting and this and that, but when you eat something in the morning, it kind of wakes up those bacterium and they kind of rule the day. And, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, this sounds like a bunch of BS, but I remember, and this was interesting because when I first came off the streets from being homeless, you know, I was having a hard time like doing anything. You know, my mind was just obliterated. So, you know, one thing I would do I'd go to Costco, I'd get this bag of a uh, box of chips, right? Little little single serve bag of chips, and I take one a day, and that was like my thing, one a day. And that was my goal. So uh, I noticed if I got up and I ate something sweet in the morning, like the apartments I was at, they would have this um, you know, once a week they'd do a continental breakfast. So I'd go up there. And that was like my treat day in the mornings. I'd go get a coffee and a chocolate bar. And all day I'd be craving those chips. I'd be like chips, 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 chips. And I started picking up that if I eat something sweet in the morning, I am famished all day. I'm like looking around like where's the food, right? Where's the sweets? Where's the carbs? Where's the chips? So I started playing with it because you know I really like eggs in the morning, bacon. I cut out bacon a few years ago for the most part. Uh, bacon's like it's not so much the the pig; it's uh, nitrates. So if you do side pork, it's not as bad. But you know, if you want to get get cancer, eat processed meat. You know, that's like a surefire way to get cancer, right? So, and I want to live. You know, so. Back to this whole morning routine, right? So I noticed even if I eat oatmeal, like that's another thing I really love in the morning, oatmeal. And I was never a big like honey and all that. I just like flat oatmeal, right? Maybe some milk. Uh, but even if I eat oatmeal, I get that famished, not as bad, but I still get that famished feeling. Pancakes, even without, you know, syrup or excessive sweets on it still get that famished feeling all day um, but if I ate protein and didn't eat anything you know no sugar in my coffee or nothing I eat protein I'd be pretty satisfied most of the day uh, black coffee would be good for hours you know and I would never get that you know satisfied feeling so it kind of I'm listening to this guy talk about these little gremlins in your stomach telling your brain what to do. And I'm like, you know, that kind of makes sense with what I, I experienced myself. So one thing I would say is if you're a fat ass like me and you want to start getting healthy, run an experiment on yourself, right? You know, check it out. You know, go a week or so, get up in the morning, no orange juice, no sugary snack, no granola, you know, just a protein, just protein. And then do another week with like, you know, healthy grains, oatmeal and, you know, fruits and stuff. And then do another week with like sugary snacks and see what happens. See, see how you feel. Take notice, you know, be aware of yourself all day and what you're feeling and see what you think. So. For me, I took that and I went, hey, this kind of makes sense, right? And then I started listening to the guy more. And, uh, you know, I'm not super big on 
I have a, not that I'm not super big, I have a really hard time with schedules. I have a really hard time maintaining the circadian rhythm, uh, balance. Uh, so I'm not great at it, I'm not whatever. But I got into this intermittent fasting and I'm not working some schedule, I'm not working a program, I'm just, you know, focusing on, hey, I'm gonna eat two meals today and they're gonna be here and here. And then I'm gonna pay more attention to what I'm eating. I'm gonna try and get stuff that's less uh, inflammatory. Get away from packaged foods. I mean, that was the first thing I did when I left America. No packaged foods. Uh, still eat some pasta once in a while, but you know, that's pretty rare. Like, packaged food to me is rice. Instant soup, I eat a lot of instant soup still. And that's just because I don't have the cupboard of spices. Um, you know, if I had a better cupboard of spices and stuff, I wouldn't even eat, eat the instant soup. It's easy enough to make on your own. A uh, little bit of broth or whatever. But, you know, that's part of traveling right now. It's hard to, hard to eat like you want to. Um, even at Airbnbs, right? Because, you know, is it for, feasible to be carrying a whole like little mini suitcase of, of uh, condiments and stuff, or you, know, you just pick up what you need on the way. So I've been playing around with this intermittent fasting thing and you know, and paying attention to that whole concept of the gremlins in the stomach. And one thing that they talked about is you gotta kinda kill off, starve out some of the bad gremlins, the sugar-based gremlins and bacterium or whatever right but um and that was an interesting concept and you know i related it back to when i tried to go completely sugarless and and it made a lot of sense um so did that in albania um i was there what uh, august september october november so i was there four months and really focused on, you know, not 100%, you know, not, not trying to go 100%, not trying to, I don't want to give up anything, right? I just want to control it more. And the interesting thing to me is, like I was out on New Year's Day with this guy in Krakow, and, you know, he wanted to stop and get some food, and I'm like, yeah, you know, food or not, it didn't matter to me. You know, and, and now, like, even when I travel, you know, it's more of a force of habit and, like, uh, you know, placebo to always go get some food before I get on the plane. But I don't need it, right? It's like, it really blew me away how little control I had over my diet and my body and how, you know, working on the intermittent fasting uh, really helped that. Uh, and it just makes me more comfortable, you know? I don't, I'm not constantly looking around for food. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'm looking around for food just because it's like, hey, you know, it's five o'clock in the afternoon, you haven't eaten anything all day, three cups of coffee, you know, you need some nutrients, you need some salt. Um, I still suffer uh, from really bad cramps, VA uh, hasn't, Give me any help on sorting out why but you know so uh the nutrients the calciums the things like that i still got to get that shit daily and i drink probably way too much water uh, i know that sounds funny but it's not uncommon for me to drink two or three liters of water in the summertime you know without any issue and you know, even now in this cold winter I'll average about a liter and a half a day. Uh, so those water solubles, I really got to put back. And it's, so, you know, if I'm not, some days I'll wake up and those little gremlins are just going crazy and I need to eat. But most days, you know, there's a little phase of hunger and then you know, if I push through that, get some coffee, uh, espresso, you know, that, 
appeases the appetite and I can just go about my day and not worry about food. You know, for a long time I was like, you know, okay, I'm leaving the house, where's my snack, where's my water, where's this, where's that? You know, now, you know, I got a bottle of water in my pack and, uh, you know, that's that. But doing those things, like paying more attention to my, what I'm eating, walking every day or most days and, uh, you know, playing around with this intermittent fasting. I'm not saying it's the right answer. I'm not saying it's the wrong answer. I'm just saying I noticed it gave me more control in my life. I noticed my clothes are fitting better. And the real interesting thing to me was, uh, I think it was in September. End of September, early October, I was, it was a bad night. I'm trying to get out the house to go to Croatia to see my friends. And uh, there was no, had a problem with my computer. And so fussing with that all day, never got to sleep. And uh, then I go to get in the shower and there's no water. You know, it happened occasionally at the apartment, but there's no water. And, you know, I hadn't showered, you know, all day. I got up early that morning, went for a walk and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and I've been cleaning the house, doing laundry, and, you know, just wasn't smelling good to begin with. And so here I am, you know, it's time to go to the airport, go to jump in the shower, there's no water. I'm like, damn. So I take a, and there's like literally like no water in the sink, no water in the shower, nothing. So I use a couple of bottles of water, get a bird bath in as best I can, put cold water out of the fridge at, you know, three in the morning. Not fun. Uh, but here's where I'm going with this. So I'm standing there and I'm getting dressed and I just naturally bent over and tied my shoes. I hadn't bent over and tied my shoes like that with such ease in years. Like maybe 2019 when I was working out a lot before I hurt my knee. Uh, I was riding my bike every day, but maybe, maybe then. But I don't even think then, because you know I think my belly was already too big then, or still too big. But I just bent over and tied my shoes, and I'm like, holy smokes! And I wasn't even thinking about it. I just did it, right? Or normally that's like a planned event. Uh, you know, getting those shoes on and off is like, okay, uh, what's the plan here? So. The other thing that happened that really kind of surprised me is, fast forward, I'm punching out of the same apartment, you know, getting ready to leave Albania, and I'm standing there, I took a sock off, I burned my foot, so I was checking my, my, the burn on my foot out, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm gonna go run some errands, so I just, like while I'm standing there, just reach down and put my sock on. You know, you, know, you kind of pull up your leg and, you know, just put my sock on while I'm standing there. I'm like, holy shit. Like, it's probably been 10 years since I could do that, eight years. So I'm pretty happy with, uh, sorry about the wind. I'm pretty happy with the results I'm getting. Like I said, I'm not tracking it. I'm not working it as hard as I could, but I'm also not giving up anything. You know, I still have a Coke once or twice a week. Still have some chocolate here and there. Still get an ice cream a couple times a week. You know, yesterday I saw this, I have a, a weakness for tarts. So I saw this little mini fruit tart, right? I went and hit that up. Uh, you know, but I'm focusing on, you know, the time frames, focusing on those extended times without eating. That really uh, takes all those cravings and all that, all that head work out of it, right? It's like, I'm not like, where's my snack? You know, if, if you went to the Airbnb I'm at now, you know, 
there's some meat in the freezer for dinner, some vegetables in the freezer for dinner, and some water. Like, I don't have snacks laying around. I don't have, you know, I don't buy snacks. You know, uh, that used to be like, you know, I wouldn't leave the house without two or three snack options in my pocket or in my bag or in the car. So that's kind of how, how I started getting healthier. I still got a long ways to go, but the only reason I'm posting this is, you know, if you're out there and you're headed towards the fat ass I was, I am, and you don't like it, you know, poke around and see what you find online. And, you know, I gotta tell you, it, it's really changed my life and really made my life a lot easier. Uh, you know, I'm not a, still not a disciple of intermittent fasting, and I'm not here to prop, you know, be a prophet for it or whatever. Uh, but it's helped me. Uh, you know, getting away from packaged foods has really helped. You know, the funny thing is, is I thought I was doing all these healthy things the last two years uh, with my diet. And the more I listen to these people online, the more I realize, yeah, I was getting healthier, but I wasn't really, you know, wasn't really punching the right tickets, right? I was, it was kind of like I stopped drinking uh, soda and went to Kool-Aid, right? Okay, so you give up the carbonation and, you know, a couple of bad chemicals, and but you're still getting all that sugar and other bad chemicals, right? So. Is Kool-Aid healthier than soda? Probably, but is it really healthy? No. And that's kind of where I was at. You know, even eating what I thought was, traditionally thought would be super healthy meals. Uh, you know, I still struggle to get those nutrients, like I was saying. And I notice it, you know, I get the brain fog, I get the you know, lack of attention, uh, you know, and, you know, the muscle cramps are the big key for me. Like I can tell, you know, when I need to eat more salt or calcium or something in there. I'm not really sure if it's calcium, magnesium, something. But, you know, so I need to get better on the supplements. Uh, but, you know, my clothes are fitting better. Lots of wiggle room. As long as they keep getting bigger and I keep getting smaller, you know, hopefully it's not the dryer. The washing machine will play a trick on me, but uh, you know, as long as my clothes keep getting bigger, it keeps getting happier and happier. And the big thing is, like, you know, I can look at a map now when I drop into a city and go, oh, that's two kilometers away, no problem. That's five kilometers away, let's go. Ten kilometers, yeah, let's. that's a day trip, let's go. You know, I can go walk that shit and go see it, I can go do it. Uh, so that's what I got. That's how I got started getting healthy, you know. And the funny thing is, I look back at 2019 and like I was riding my bike every day and doing this and doing that. Definitely getting healthier than what I was, but I wasn't really losing any weight. My clothes weren't getting any smaller, and you know, I had to have those snacks. I had to, I was still tied to that feed bucket around my neck. And, uh, you know, I don't have a feed bucket around my neck. So it's funny, too, because all this talk about budget, what does this do in the end? It saves money, right? Eat less, better quality foods, less often. You know, I'm spending less money and getting healthier, losing weight, getting more mobile getting to do more things, you know, the upside is just vertical, and the downside is what? I mean, what's the downside? I don't, I don't even see a downside. A little bit of work? If you don't want to work, there's a grave somewhere. Just go crawl in it, you know? Life is work, and, you know, this is easy work when, it come, when you come down to it. It's real easy work. So again, if you're heading in the direction
direction I was. Or you're stuck on the couch. You know, it's not an impossibility. You know, for a long time I just gave up on my weight and gave up on my mobility. And it's not an impossibility. It just takes, you know, a desire. It's like, set a goal. What's your goal? Where do you want to go? You know, start walking. Take it slow, see your doctor, make sure you're not going to keel over and die. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about that, but when fatties start exercising, if they hit it too hard, a lot of times they, they just keel over and die. Uh, you know, so pay attention to your doctor, but you know, the biggest thing is, like I've said many times, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can get off my ass, you can get off your ass. If I can struggle with the pain, you can too. If I can go to the Baltic Sea, I can too. Take care. Not dead yet, but you can see I'm still wearing that green shirt from the first picture and it's gotten a lot looser. So we'll see what happens in the immediate future, but I think eventually I'm gonna have to step on the scales and find something uh, a little better to measure my progress than a baggy shirt.